Hello, God bless you all. Today, I'd like to uh, present to you the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time, my reflection. Uh, for some reason, I'm having problems here. No. Anyhow, um, Yes, okay. I believe I'm all right. Uh, I just received a warning up on the screen, but I, I really don't know what it means. Uh, this particular Sunday is uh, very rich, but also uh, has a dark side. First of all, the wonderful first reading, Isaiah chapter 25, verses uh, 6 to 10a. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich uh, food and choice wines, juicy, rich food and pure choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. Israel is coming back from Babylonia, but here, God, he's promising, Isaiah is promising something far greater than just restoration of uh, the Holy Land. He's really pr uh, promising a heaven for all peoples. Something wondrous, spectacular. It's really, I believe, really an invitation to heaven. Uh, in other words, he's saying, what I have for you is beyond all your imagining beyond anything that this earth could possibly provide you with. And to help us understand what it is, he's recalling the wonderful memories, I, I imagine all of us have, I certainly have, of wonderful meals with beloved family and company of friends that have made it just a spectacularly wonderful time. Feast. But it was not just a feast of food and drink, but it was an emotional feast. A time when our heart was enjoying the whole thing. Uh, and it was a time of really rejoicing in every, in every part of our being. We as complete human beings were enjoying that time. And he's, he's saying that that's a little taste of heaven, of what heaven is going to be for all of us. It's an invitation. And he continues that invitation in the gospel reading. Come to the feast. But unfortunately, many ignored the invitation. And so he went out and extended the invitation to all. It's the invitation to a spectacular, spectacular feast. It's heaven. Incomparable joy of life that flows out of the incredible love that God has for us. The incomparable joy of life that flows out of the incredible love that God has for us. The material feast that we had before isn't anything in comparison to the joy we're going to have of simply being with God's love, the life that God's love generates in us and is given to us. The feast is on the love overwhelming and beyond any words. That spectacularly awesome God he has for us. But on the dark side, those who reject the invitation will suffer horribly because they will be left to the devil whose desire is to inflict endless pain. If we reject the feast that is heaven, there's nothing else left for us but the devil and what he has for us because we have rejected what God has for us. But then now we're going to, over to the uh, epistle reading Paul's letter to Philippians, chapter 4, verses 12 to 14, and then verses 19 to 20. 
to get to that heaven, we must go through trials, the trials of this world. There's the good times and the bad, as we say in the marriage ceremony, in sickness and in health. Then to quote from the reading itself, being well fed and going hungry. There will be the good times and the bad. This world is both. And we must go through it and prove ourselves worthy. The Jesus of extreme suffering of a horrible crucifixion does not guarantee good feelings in our life in this world, but that we can do all things in him who strengthens us. And our God will fully supply whatever we need, no matter in the good times and the bad, in the sickness and the health, he will carry us through. If we put ourselves into his hands, we put our lives into his hands. May God bless you all.